it was going viral again the other day. If you'll remember, not that long ago, we talked about how they announced Robert Downey Jr. will be playing Doctor Doom in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the next two Avengers films. Uh, and then the communists got very angry when they found out that he was going to be paid a hefty sum. Well, there's been uh, re-reports of that salary coming out, and everybody is online, and they're just absolutely whining about it. Yeah, so Robert Downey Jr. is going to be earning a hundred million dollar payday as Doctor Doom in the next two Avengers movies and people are really angry about it. They say no one should be paid a hundred million dollars to play a character in a movie no matter what it is, no matter what the returns will be, it doesn't matter the context or who this is, what their value is for the company that is hiring them. This is the greed they talked about in the Bible. That's what that's, they say. That's worse, too, because it's not even like these. Not, it's not like, like why are saying, you commandeering the Bible, by the way, for your communist bullshit? He's not even saying, like, this is the greed they talked about in the Communist Manifesto. Yeah. This is, they're <laughs> saying it's in the Bible, right? Yeah, so I didn't take kindly to that. But uh, Robert Downey Jr. talked about this in a recent interview. I don't know if it's confirmed one way or the other, but I wouldn't be surprised if his payday actually was that high. And someone replied with a ranking list of the highest paid actors and actresses of all time. Most yeah. of them are male, so I'm surprised people aren't mad about that. But Keanu Reeves came first, earning $156 million for Matrix... Uh, Revolutions. Matrix Revolutions and Matrix Reloaded. Yep, the sequels. Bruce Willis in The Sixth Sense. Tom Cruise for Top Gun Maverick, and War of the Worlds, and Mission Impossible 2. What they're what they're missing out on here, especially with the Top Gun Maverick one, it's unbelievably dishonest to pretend like they're like, here is your $100 million check, please get it to the bank as quickly as possible. Um, no, he earned $12 million and had it in his contract that depending on the box office returns on the film, he would see staggered and increasing revenue returns, right? So he made a lot of money because he bet on himself took the smaller paycheck, the smaller mm -hmm. upfront paycheck and said, if we can get this thing to a billion dollars, I'll earn way more. This was the same type of stuff that happened when Scarlett Johansson was pissed when they released Black Widow in, on Disney Plus at the same time as it released in theaters because she had it yeah. in her contract that she would make more depending on how well it did at the box office. But when you release it on both platforms at the same time, you hampered their ability to do so. Yeah, I think they reported that in Robert Downey's... Uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s contract, he is making a base amount of a hundred million, but could make up to two hundred million based uh, on the the box office returns. I do want to point out this tweet that I tweet the, the, that I put out a long time ago. Um, he's not overpaid. <laughs> he's not overpaid. Uh, it says he's going to get paid significantly more than eighty million dollars as Doctor Doom. Um, collectively, the three Iron Man movies, the four Avengers movies, all of which he starred in, have brought in approximately 10 billion Jeez. at the box office. So if we're talking about return on investment, you know. It seems reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know that Marvel's track he's record over, is not he's made great over, lately. He's made over $600 million from Marvel. Just remember guys, 600 million is a lot smaller number than 10 billion. Yeah. Just so you know, I understand that the hundred in there makes it hard to understand, but 600 million is a lot smaller than 10 billion. It's like when people would talk about Trump and they'd be like, his dad gave him like a million dollar loan. I'm like, you know, billion is like a lot more than that, right? One person responded, Angela Bassett was paid only 350,000 for her Oscar nominated performance in Wakanda Forever of which most of us can agree she was snubbed. What exactly does RDJ bring to the table that requires <laughs> over 200 times that amount of money? I think I just told you, the $10 billion. <laughs> and the fact that right? Angela Bassett Wasn't was the not the, even yeah. the star of Wakanda Forever. That movie sucked, I hated it. Let alone, was she first Chadwick Boseman who first made one, yeah. Wakanda Forever into yeah. you know something that could be a franchise? Chadwick Boseman was a huge part of that, right? Yes, like, like I, there's a there's a twenty. Letitia there. Wright wouldn't be expecting a similar payday to Chadwick Boseman, even though she starred in that movie. Yeah, I don't know what she made in. Unthoughtful speech said, "Funny, the hacks at Wikipedia have put up on Heinz bio that she has stated she would divorce Bobby should he take a position in Trump's cabinet." See, this is. I sick. saw that, but I have no idea if that's true. Why Did are they sowing division in their in their marriage? 
Yeah, it shouldn't. I hope that that's yeah. not true, but I don't know. I can answer that question because they're bad people. They're <laughs> I bad hope she's people. more reasonable than that. Look, whenever something like this comes up, it becomes the same boring argument that happens every time where people who don't understand how business works you know, don't realize that somebody can be worth that much money because they have bargaining power, because they have past work, a track record that makes it possible for them to say, look, my time is valuable. I've already made, and this isn't even like cross platform or, or business, right? This isn't somebody who made a bunch of money for Warner Brothers coming in and saying like, look, I want to work at the Disney machine and make you a bunch of money, even though they might have different types of movies that they're making. This is literally somebody from the same company with the same people in charge, meaning that, you know, Kevin Feige is still the one running stuff over there. Say, look, I made you a bunch of money before, you know, pay me a lot of money and I will make you a bunch of money this time around. Yeah, RDJ said, I looked into the character and went, wow. What he did is he, he saw Doom. <laughs> I looked into the contract the two and I saw O's nine and, figures. The two O's in Doom just became a bunch more zeros. And <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah. It uh, was wow. And look, and th all of this precludes the fact that he won an Oscar last year, so he's worth even more um, now. Yeah. Well, it's funny. They were kind of equivocating Angela Bassett being nominated for an Oscar. Uh, but they're saying because it's for a Marvel movie. Box when he, office draw. When he actually won an Oscar, yeah. which gives you more bargain power and brought in 10 gazillion and the, the movie remember i only mentioned the movies that he starred in right that's not even including the spider-man movies where you know he played a big part of oh, introducing yeah. tom holland's spider-man mm -hmm. yeah. to marvel and stuff like that so it's just it's silly but you can't argue business with There's them no contract that states if you get nominated for an oscar from this movie we'll pay you more that's not a thing well, no, no, but but it gives you more bargaining power the next time the around. Next time. Like the next time around. This yes. okay. So this same thing happened on the set of Miami Vice because Jamie Fox won an Oscar for I think it was somebody can correct me. I think it was Ray. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that. And he was being billed after Colin Farrell, and he's like, I want equal billing now. And then what they started doing is like, so they put them on equal billing, and then in certain markets, his name was listed first and then in European markets Colin Farrell's name was released first there's a reason like there's it's important in that industry how much time your name spends on screen when you get credited is actually paid attention to we have a 20 from CG 87343 RDJ will always be a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude always remember never go full re <laughs> thanks for all you do love the show and always try to have fun from time to time to the whiners I say cry harder see they really missed a chance to make him Kang and have him play as It would have been Lazarus. so much funnier. Uh, it, I, I really do believe that if they had done that, maybe they could have gotten away. He's the only actor they could have gotten away that with. That would actually way. save the MCU. It There's would. There's a lot of talk of what will save no, the MCU. My point was that if they were going to do it, they had to do it in Deadpool and Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, It's that's the only place where him. you'd be allowed to, to do it. The, um, the post post credit scene introducing RDJ the, as The gay. post 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 <laughs> credit. <laughs> right. like the, it's the only time they've ever done three <laughs> yes. to make sure like as many people have left the theater as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so they can't riot. Mm -hmm. Look, uh, uh, is there examples of this that you guys can think of in other business where this gets happened as much? Because the big problem here is that actors are also whiners. So I don't have a lot of sympathy for actors because they tend to be champagne socialists anyways. Mm -hmm. So it's funny how they become suddenly very business minded when it's their own money. But they always get mad when the theaters, do they're like, why didn't the theater let me make this avant-garde movie that's going to get sold to 12 people? And then they get mad, you know, and the studio mm -hmm. won't let them spend their money. But I'll, ne I'll never be mad at actors for negotiating contracts, even if they're losers. Well, this is why the fake conversation around the gender pay gap even exists. Some people know how to negotiate for themselves and some don't. Mm -hmm. Um, and look, with Angela Bassett, she could have argued for, I, I'm sure she saw a pay raise after uh, the first film as compared to the second one, right? She's she wasn't the, the reason that Wakanda Forever no. made a profit. Uh, this comment <laughs> says, who is Angela Bassett? Like, seriously, be so, real. So he says, nobody paid to see her. They paid to see a Marvel movie, the brand. Exactly. I mean, that's kind right. of the argument that people have made from the beginning is that Marvel doesn't need the big name actors as much as a lot of these days, the big name actors seem to feel like they get some type of rub from doing a Marvel movie. And I've made that argument with directors in the past. I actually have a list over on the wall there of like the 
there's like nine or ten well-known directors that have done Marvel movies. It might be more now, but that's out of like 35 directors that have made the movies, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So not everyone is Taika Waititi or Ryan Coogler or Sam Raimi. Uh, or even the Russos got famous doing the Marvel movies. They weren't necessarily famous beforehand. There are a list of popular directors that have done them. But for the most part, a lot of them end up being smaller directors that they pluck from obscurity because they're making the movie their way. I still remember when they were doing... I don't think it was Ant-Man and Wasp. It was... uh, I don't remember which movie it was, but she was mad that they wouldn't let her direct the action scenes. Do you mean Nia DaCosta? I don't think it was Nia DaCosta. It was, I think it was from the Marvel, uh, Captain Marvel, whoever did uh, the original Captain Marvel. Whoever it was, whichever Marvel movie it was, they were like, oh, I was really excited to do the action scenes. They're like, don't worry about that. We'll do that. <laughs> like, you're being paid to have your name put on the Marvel machine, right? Right. Um, they give too much creative freedom. Look what happened at DC when they gave, uh, what's her name, Freedom on Wonder Woman 2. It was Patty awful. Jenkins. When they get yeah. when Patty Jenkins did Wonder Woman 1, where she directed and other people wrote, and there was a lot of influence from Zack Snyder. Criticism, criticize Zack Snyder all you want. There's obviously reasonable critique there. The dude spends eight hours just establishing, you know, a shot of a guy walking <laughs> down a walking down a mountain. I get it. That's fine. But he still had a better understanding of the characters in action than Patty Jenkins did because they gave her control of Wonder Woman 1984 and it became a mess that became made fun of. Right. Right? So The Russos are getting, I think, $80 million for this. Yeah. Uh, the, somebody said, the directors aren't even made that much. I'm like, do you really think we live in a world where the directors make as much as, like, t- t- I don't think Christopher McQuarrie makes as much as Tom Cruise on the movies. Maybe I'm wrong. Like, when he does Most the Mission Most moviegoers don't even give a single thought no. to who directed the movie. They don't. They don't Ever. Care. So, not, it's very generous for them anyway. Yeah. All right. So, again, guys, uh, never go full communist and understand never go that full the, the free market is exactly what you want and stuff like this, unless you want to see a bunch of people who are hired because they can afford them rather than people who actually draw you to the theaters. Certainly, whatever Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman are making for Deadpool and Wolverine is <laughs> earned and deserved. Cope and Yep. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye guys.